Jonathan Harker's Journal 15th October, Varna We left Charing Cross on the morning of the 12th to go to Paris the same night and took the places secured for us in the Orient Express. We travelled night and day, arriving here at about five o'clock. Lord Godalming went to the consular to see if any telegram had arrived for him, whilst the rest of us came on to this hotel, the Odessas. The journey may have had incidents. I was, however, too eager to get on to care for them. Until the Serena Catherine comes into port, there will be no interest for me in anything in the wide world. Thank God Mina is well and looks to be getting stronger. Her color is coming back. She sleeps a great deal. Throughout the journey she slept nearly all the time. Before sunrise and sunset, however, she is very wakeful and alert and it has become a habit for Van Helsing to hypnotize her at such times. At first some effort was needed and he had to make many passes, but now she seems to yield at once as if by habit and scarcely any action is needed. He seems to have power at these particular moments to simply will and her thoughts obey him. He always asks her what she can see and hear. She answers to the first, Nothing, all is dark. And to the second, I can hear the waves lapping against the ship and the water rushing by, canvas and cordage strain and masts and yards creak. The wind is high, I can hear it in the shrouds. And the bow throws back the foam. It is evident that the Serena Catherine is still at sea, hastening on her way to Varna. Lord Godalming has just returned. He had four telegrams, one each day since we started, and all to the same effect, that the Serena Catherine had not been reported to Lloyd's from anywhere. He had arranged before leaving London that his agent should send him every day a telegram saying if the ship had been reported. He was to have a message even if she were not reported so that he might be sure that there was a watch being kept at the other end of the wire. We had dinner and went to bed early. Tomorrow... We are to see the vice-consul and to arrange, if we can, about getting on board the ship as soon as she arrives. Van Helsing says that our chance will be to get on the boat between sunrise and sunset. The Count, even if he takes the form of a bat, cannot cross the running water of his own volition and so cannot leave the ship. As he dare not change to man's form without suspicion, which he evidently wishes to avoid, he must remain in the box. If, then, we can come on board after sunrise, he is at our mercy, for we can open the box and make sure of him as we did of poor Lucy before he wakes. What mercy he shall get from us will not count for much. We think that we shall not have much trouble with officials or the seamen. Thank God, this is the country where bribery can do anything, and we are well supplied with money. We have only to make sure that the ship cannot come into port between sunset and sunrise without our being warned, and we shall be safe. Judge Moneybag will settle this case, I think. 16th October Mina's report still the same, lapping waves and rushing water, darkness and favouring winds. 
we are evidently in good time, and when we hear of the Serena Catherine, we shall be ready. As she must pass the Dardanelles, we are sure to have some report. 17th October. Everything is pretty well fixed now, I think, to welcome the Count on his return from his tour. Godalming told the shippers that he fancied that the box sent aboard might contain something stolen from a friend of his and got a half-consent that he might open it at his own risk. The owner gave him a paper telling the captain to give him every facility in doing whatever he choose on board the ship, and so a similar authorization to his agent at Varna. We have seen the agent, who was much impressed with Godalming's kindly manner to him, and we are all satisfied that whatever he can do to aid our wishes will be done. We have already arranged what to do in case we get the box open. If the count is there, Van Helsing and Seward will cut off his head at once and drive a stake through his heart. Morris and Godalming and I shall prevent interference, even if we have to use the arms which we shall have ready. The professor says that if we can so treat the Count's body, it will soon after fall into dust. In such case, there would be no evidence against us in case of any suspicion of murder were aroused. But even if it were not, we should stand or fall by our act, and perhaps some day this very script may be evidence to come between some of us and a rope. For myself, I should take the chance only too thankfully if it were to come. We mean to leave no stone unturned to carry out our intent. We have arranged with certain officials that the instant the Serena Catherine is seen, we are to be informed by a special messenger. 24th October A whole week of waiting. Daily telegrams to Godalming, but only the same story not yet reported. Mina's morning and evening hypnotic answer is unvaried, lapping waves, rushing water, and creaking masts. Telegram October 24th Rufus Smith, Lloyd's, London To Lord Godalming, care of H.B.M. Vice Consul Varna Sarina Catherine reported this morning from Dardanelles.